Hello, in this quick video, I show you my top three ways that you can calculate your own college basketball point spreads. Yes, you can calculate your own point spreads for college basketball games and then compare your own point spreads that you've calculated on your own with the Vegas point spreads. And then you can look for discrepancies, possible errors, and opportunities for investment. All right, so here we go. The first way to do it is to use the ESPN College Basketball Power Index. So you go to ESPN for this. You go to their men's college basketball site, NCAAM. Then go to more, and then they have BPI right here. BPI. College Basketball Index. College Basketball Index BPI is a measure of team strength that is meant to be the best predictor of performance going forward. BPI represents how many points above or below an average team is. All right. Uh, for the purposes of this video, I want to use Duke and Syracuse. They played yesterday. That would be February 24th. Today is February 25th, 2018. So they're a recent example, and we can see how the calculated point spreads compare with the Vegas point spreads. All right, so we have Duke here, uh, and all these teams are ranked by BPI. Villanova is number one, 20.9. Villanova, uh, Villanova is ranked number one, 20.9. Virginia is 20.8. Purdue is 19.6. Duke is 19.4. 19.4, okay. Syracuse is ranked 51st, 51. Their BPI is 8.7. So the BPI, which is Basketball Power Index, as presented by ESPN, can be directly converted into a point spread. You can use these numbers to calculate your own point spreads. Um, what do I feel about the BPI? I think that there are very good numbers. I've, I've checked over and over and over again. Uh, by using the BPI and calculating my own point spreads, they correlate really well with Vegas. Um, so uh, I, I, I think that these numbers are, are reputable and should be considered uh, when doing analysis. All right, so let's, let's do this. Spreadsheet here, bigger. So we're doing BPI. Got Duke. Duke. Duke is 19.4. 19.4. Syracuse is 8.7. Syracuse, 8.7. So what you do is subtract the favorite Duke uh, and Syracuse. So Duke minus Syracuse, 19.4 minus 8.7. 19.4 minus 8.7. OK. Hit it. That gives you 10.7. So that's Duke minus Syracuse. So that's the difference between Duke and Syracuse using BPI. Now Duke is the favorite, so to get the point spread for that, it's basically just minus 10.7. So Duke should be minus 2.7. This would be on a neutral, at a neutral location. In this game, Duke was at home. The home team, you have to subtract three. That's the uh, typical standard home court um, advantage you would give to a home team. So then you get so in order to get the 
line adjusted for home, home court advantage, that would be minus 10.7 minus 3. That gives you 13.7 point spread. And this is for Duke. And that is the calculation using BPI. That's well power index. Okay, cool. Now let's see what was the actual line here. Duke's line for that game. They played February 24th against Syracuse at home. They were minus 14. Wow. Look how close. It's the same. Vegas. Minus 14. Amazing. And I've done this over and over and over again with games, and they correspond. Uh, so that makes me believe that the BPI is, is good. It's valid. It's valid. It, it may not... It's it's valid and it's maybe that's what maybe they use ESPN's BPI or something similar. Since I've seen this happen so many times, the closeness between the calculated point spread using BPI and the uh, Vegas line, I have concluded that uh, the BPI is is a good metric. It's a good measurement and worth looking at. Um, also, it gives me insight. It tells me that Vegas is using some sort of power rating like the BPI, or they're actually using BPI to calculate point spreads. And they pretty much consistently do it. There may be occasional adjustments for injuries, especially in primetime games, um, individual matchups. So we see here that um, that was a pretty good demonstration. All right, next. So that's method one. Let me show you method two. Here we go. Method two uses uh, uses uh, point differential. Point differential. So what's the point differential? Point differential is basically it's simple. It's um, point scored basically offense minus points allowed. That's defense. Okay, and then you just subtract it two, and that gives you the point differential. All right, and this is very powerful. Throughout all sports that I've looked at, uh, MLB baseball, NBA basketball, um, hockey, NHL hockey, NFL football, college football, the point differential of all the st statistical variables that are out there has the strongest correlation to win percentage. And this is for all sports. So, okay, let's look at the point differential. So we got Duke here. Again, looking at Duke. Duke, let's look at the Duke offense. This is Duke. So the Duke offense, point scored is 86.2. This is from the ESPN site. Their defense allows... 69.8 points per game. So the point differential for Duke is offense, points scored, minus defense, 69 points allowed. That gives you the point differential, 16.4. So let's look at, compare that to the BPI. BPI is 19.4. Um, I the BPI correlates in number very close to uh, point differential, by the way. That's an observation that I've had. That's the point differential for Duke. Now let's look at Syracuse. This is Syracuse now. Syracuse. Offense, defense, offense, points scored, 68.0. Uh, points allowed, 63.8. Okay. Point differential, 
for Syracuse. It's going to be offense, 68 points scored, minus defense, 63.8. Boom. That's their point differential. How does this 4.2 compare with the BPI? 8.7, 4.2. All right. Okay, so now that we have the point differentials for Duke and Syracuse, how do we get the point spread? Calculated point spread using point differential. So what I want to do here is take Duke's point. We got Duke's uh, point differential sixty point four. We got Syracuse. Their point difference is 4.2, right? To get the point spread, what you do is take the favorite and subtract the underdog. Duke, 16.4 minus 4.2. See? Boom. 12.2, and that would be on a neutral court, neutral location. So Duke is the favorite, and that would be minus 12.2. So you just make the favorite minus 12.2. If you consider home court, that's minus 3. And then the, fine, the point spread would be then... Twelve point two minus three for the home court advantage, fifteen point two. Okay. Oops, not that. This one. Okay. Fifteen point two. How does that compare to the actual point spread in Vegas? The actual point spread in Vegas is minus fourteen. It's only off by one. That's pretty amazing. Anyway, if I've done this with many, many games and it's the same result, uh, this calculated, uh, the point spread using this methodology is, it's close to the Vegas point spread. And that tells me something too. That tells me two things. They're using uh, stats for the whole regular season. It also tells me that they're using point differential. It indicates that they're using point differential as the primary backbone for their point spread calculations. This is a very important insight because if you know how the lines are generated, then it gives you a foundation to make better predictions and picks. Um, I mean, I, I believe that in, this, in the primetime big games, there's probably more adjustment and refining. But in general, like for example, on Saturday where there's almost 100 games, I believe for the most part, most games are just generated in this way. And uh, yesterday, I um, I went through the numbers, and the point spreads match, correlate really well with the met methodology based on point differential. Just remember that point differential. Point differential is a very important concept in generating point spreads. So again, uh, very close to Vegas, minus 14, minus 15. BPI was minus 13.7. So using the BPI method is close to the point differential method. Very interesting, huh? Now for the third methodology. A little bit more complicated, but you going based on the same concepts and also illustrative. A lot of times uh, when you hear, uh, we hear things in the world and we just take things as dogma, it's good to know why. Why is this? How did you come up with that? And by understanding that we come out, we come out, with maybe a better appreciation for the truth. And we also see that maybe there may be some false assumptions and false calculations in certain theories. And this is generally applicable. All right, moving on to the next method. All righty, the next method. All right, let me introduce you to this website called kenpalm.com. And uh, 
this uh, Kenpom, K-E-N-P-O-M dot com. Here it is, K-E-N-P-O-M dot com. Um, looks complicated, but once you know what the terms are defined, uh, the definition of the terms, then things make a little bit more sense. But let me try to simplify things for you because there's these tables have a, a lot of variables, but there are certain variables that are more important for us. Okay, first of all, let's talk about okay team offense and defense. Efficiency is a very important uh, concept, and I believe that actually efficiency is probably the most important determinant of whether a team wins or not. Not necessarily the point spread, but in terms of winning. Okay. So here we go, efficiency. Offensive efficiency, it's points scored per 100 offensive possessions. So when a team gets a possession, can they convert that into points? It's kind of like in football. The possessions are not as often, each possession is precious, so you have to try to convert that possession into points. So offensive efficiency for college basketball is points scored per 100 offensive possessions. And that makes sense. If you're scoring more per possession, then you're more efficient. Defensive efficiency is the flip side. Points allowed per 100 defensive possessions. Okay. Efficiency. Very important concept. Now, going back to the table, these are some items um, to, uh, to help define uh, that, that are important for our discussion. Adjusted refers to adjustments based on the opponent's uh, the the level of quality of the opponent. So these stats are then adjusted for the strength of schedule. So the opponent really matters, but it's uh, it's uh, it's factored into these adjusted numbers. So ADJ means adjusted. So ADJO refers to adjusted offensive efficiency. It's offense. It's efficiency. It's an offensive efficiency metric, and it's adjusted. Adjusted offensive efficiency. An estimate of the offensive efficiency points scored per 100 possessions a team would have against the average D1 defense. So it is factoring in strength of schedule and the quality of the opponent. And these numbers are assuming a hypothetical situation where they play the average D1 defense. ADJ, I mean ADJD is defense, efficiency, defensive efficiency, adjusted. Adjusted defensive efficiency. An estimate of the defensive efficiency points allowed per 100 possessions a team would have against the average D1 offense. Again, adjusted for strength of schedule. Then we got ADJT, T, tempo, adjusted tempo, tempo, tempo is a pace metric. Tempo, an estimate of the tempo, possessions per 40 minutes, 40 minutes being a regulation game, a team would have against the team that wants to play at an average D1 tempo. Okay. Now that we have these variables um, explained, let's go back to this chart here. You got the team, you got ADJO, which is the offense, ADJD, which is defense, and ADJT, tempo. Offensive efficiency, defensive efficiency, tempo. Offense, defense, tempo. ADJEM refers to point margin, and this correlates with point differential, offense minus defense. Okay. ADG, ADJEM is adjusted efficiency margin. E is efficiency, M is margin. This is a point differential metric. How do you calculate ADJEM? That is, you take the offense, ADJO, and subtract the defense, ADJD. So with Virginia, it is 116 minus 83.6. This gives you 82.38. For the for us to calculate the point spread, we're going to be using this ADJEM. All right, so let's do it. So Duke here has an ADJEM margin, efficiency margin, of 29.38. Duke 
is 29.38, and that's ADJ, DM. Syracuse is 14, 14.29. Okay, what you do here, point differential. Oh, sorry, sorry. So point, oh, we'll just call it the difference. Duke minus Syracuse. 29.38. Fourteen point two nine. All right. So you subtract these two numbers, Duke minus Syracuse. That gives you fifteen point oh nine. All right. But remember, this is based per one hundred possessions. In a game, uh, most games do not have a hundred possessions. Now, if you look at their Kim Palm's tempo metric here, A D J T tempo. The high end is Savannah State, 83.7. That's an outlier. Citadel is 77.8. Okay, then you start entering this curve here. On the bottom, you got Virginia, 59. And this is number of possessions in a 40 minute regulation game. Uh, for the most part, the uh, so again, Virginia is an outlier too, but the lumping here is 62.5 on the low end. On the high end, I would start the cluster of, of teams at 77.8. So 77.8 on the high end, 62.5 on the low end. For the most part, most of the teams are between 65 and 75. In 70 possessions, that's a good rule of thumb number to keep in your head. That's 70 possessions, 70 possessions, 70 possessions per 40 minute regulation game. Okay, 70. So first we need to calculate, well, okay, we got 1509 points per 100 possessions. But what about a, okay, that's great, but what about in a 40-minute regulation game? First, we need to figure out, okay, we're going to do points per 100 possessions. So you're going to divide by 115.09, 15.09 divided by 100, all right? So we're taking 15.09 points per 100 possessions. That's the um, dimensions of that particular number, 1509, divided by 100. And that gives us 0 0.1509, okay? Next, I'm estimating the average 70 possessions per game. There'll be 70 possessions per game. Maybe 70 here. So many possessions in the game. So this is 0 0.1509 points per possession times 70 possessions. That gives us 0 0.1509 times times 70. Boom. All right. That gives us 10. That's adjusted for. 70 possessions in a 40 minute regulation game, 10.563, all right? So that would be, that would be our point spread. And that would be Duke's point spread. Because remember we, we subtracted Duke from, uh, subtracted Duke and Syracuse. So that would be Duke's point spread on a neutral court, neutral location. So remember home, and so since Duke is the favorite, you gotta minus that. Okay, home court, that's a minus three. So that gives us our final point spread of minus 
plus, okay, minus three, home court. See? Return. That gives us our point spread. 13.6. Boom. Uh, so that would be Duke as the favorite, home favorite. Uh, how does this compare to the Vegas line? It says it's the same. Wow. So the point spread was minus 14, Duke minus 14 on February 24th. This is minus 13.6. When you round up, it's minus 14. The same. That's amazing. And this happens. You can try this. It happens over and over and over again. Now, to take it to another level, all right, let me take it to another level here. Let's do the same calculation, but let's do, let's, uh, let's make that tempo number a little bit better. And so what I want to do here is this. I want to take the tempos of both the teams. So Duke's tempo, I want to get a better number. Remember, in the previous calculation, I used 70 as a, an estimate. If you want to do a quick calculation, 70 is a good number. But let's do, um, let's get a more refined calculation of that uh, tempo. So Duke is 70.6, that's their tempo. Tempo Duke. And that's, I'm looking at ADJT. Duke is 70.6. Let's look at Syracuse, tempo Syracuse. Their tempo is 63.8. So Syracuse has a slower tempo, 63.8, 63.8, 63.8, 63.8. Boom. All right. So what I want to do here, I want to average it. So add 70.6 plus 63.8. Divide that sum by 2. Boom. So that would be our average tempo. That's Duke and Syracuse. See? So instead of using 70 now, we're going to use 67.2. All right, 67.2. So starting here, Duke is, okay, 15.09 per 100 possessions. 15.09. Hundred possessions, then divide that by a hundred. Okay, so now that's points per possession, single possession. Now we're going to multiply this by sixty-seven point two. Okay, so let's do that. Point one five, point one five oh nine times sixty-seven point two. Again, this is an adjusted tempo. I mean, the average tempo be for Duke and Syracuse. So, ready to go. I'm going to hit this. That gives us 10.14. All right. So, Duke is the favorite. So, then it's going to be minus 10.14. That's on a neutral court, neutral location. They're the home team. So home team is adjustments minus three. And then what you got here is minus 10.14, minus three, and that gives us this point spread. Calculate. Okay, how does that compare to the previous one? Of course, it's different because the tempo calculation is different. 13.14 versus 
Six, not that much difference, about a half point. Uh, let's see here, Vegas. Let's look at that Vegas line again. Vegas was minus 14. And we got minus 13.4, really close. So I'm gonna say uh, the two things, I've done this just, uh, I like numbers, I like digging into stuff, data mining. Okay, two main things I'd have to say is, number one, that, well, several things. One is you can calculate your own point spread. I did this because I was thinking maybe I can calculate a better point spread and see where Vegas makes an error or a manipulation. Um, but what I found was actually a lot, of the, uh, a lot of the Vegas lines correspond with these three different methods of calculation. So then I thought to myself, well, that's interesting. Um, and so what it also tells me is this. The three methods, the BPI, the point differential, and the uh, Kempom methodologies, I believe all, all are, are, all are, are all based on point differential. Point differential is point scored minus points allowed, offense minus defense. And it makes sense. Um, but I've gone through a lot of those money, uh, a lot of through, uh, I've read a lot of money ball books and uh, sports analytics, and they look at different statistics like in baseball, batting average, on base percentage, all those kind of things. But the most, the, the strongest variable that correlates with win percentage is point differential. It makes sense, it's common sense, but after you do the, 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 you do the statistics, the, the common sense answer is the right answer. But you need to know that. And then keeping that in mind, that has to be the framework for when you're analyzing games, offense minus defense. That's the structure. But it's also the structure of the point spread. So the point differential is a dominating uh, concept in lines making. Number two, they're using season averages. Now, when you have a lot of games like college basketball or baseball, MLB baseball, NBA basketball, NHL hockey, uh, teams go through uh, slumps and streaks, okay, up and down. So they the these numbers and these these power ratings and these calculated point spreads represent represent uh, a seasonal measurement. They're they're seasonal averages. So the input is seasonal numbers. So what that means is if a team is having local variations or recent variations, a recent trend that you're noticing, you can take advantage of that. Let's say a team started slow and now they're hot. The point spread is not going to reflect that because the point spread is based on a seasonal average, just like if a team is slumping. Okay, So you look for, you look for local variations or recent variations in trends. Uh, in calculus, there's this concept of local versus global minima and maxima. So think of the point spread as a global number using seasonal averages. And in your mind, when you're analyzing a game, you look for the local or more recent trends. And that's where you can start to see gaps. Also, because of seasonal averages, if there's a recent injury, that might not be factored into the point spreads. Now, I have seen in big games, Vegas, I've, I've noted an injury, and then I look at the point spread, and it's like, wow, I've seen it. They've made the adjustment. And it's their right to make that adjustment. Um, but it doesn't always happen. So if there's an injury, especially if the lines have been, uh, been published, for example, in uh, NFL football and college football, those point spreads usually come out the Sunday before. So those lines are there for six to seven days. Uh, let me give you an example. Let's say Dallas Cowboys are playing... Um, uh, Dallas Cowboys are playing the Philadelphia Eagles. And then... On the that line comes out on Sunday. Let's say on Sunday morning, you read that all the starting offensive linemen for Dallas uh, got the flu and they're not playing today. That's new information, but that that information was not incorporated in the point spread, which was established one week before. It's a temporal uh, mis uh, it's a temporal discrepancy right there. So that's where you can take advantage of. So timing it's it's like day trading. It's uh, timing is an issue, especially you take advantage of recent information that hasn't been distributed. And for whatever reason, the all the casinos tend to like to not vary from each other. They go in a herd. They publish a line. They just stick with it. You never see uh, uh, one casino say, well, I don't agree with you. Uh, you have Philadelphia plus 14. I'm going to have Philadelphia plus minus 7. You never see that. They all kind of run together. So they're, they're, hand, they're handcuffed by their own conventions. They all run together. They set a line, but they don't make significant adjustments 
uh, for most games uh, it, uh, to incorporate new information. So anyway, that, that's the benefit of going deeper here. Um, so anyway, hi, I hope that helped. Uh, thank you for watching my video. Uh, please, uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. Please share with your friends. Uh, please subscribe and please ask your friends to subscribe. All right, today's February 25th, 2018. Have a good day.